Good morning, Red Hawks Nation. This is Marcia Lowen, class of 1993, and this is R360 News. Have a great day and remember to wash your hands. I'm your host, Mrs. Reimer. Well, we've made it through another week. It is Friday, May 8th today, day four on the school calendar. In our top story today, our Red Hawk of the week is Piper Murray in grade nine. Piper was nominated by one of our teachers who noted that she has been a great support for her younger sibling in her schoolwork. Piper's family added, that she is definitely Willow's go-to helper for math and other subjects. She is always the calm, soft, sensible voice in this stressful stressful storm of COVID-19. Thank you, Piper. And at this time, we have another Rube Goldberg challenge, this time from Jackson Fair, who found a creative way to accomplish the task of using a machine to fill up a cup with water. Let's take a look. Oh, it's going to work. It works, but I didn't get a lot of water. Hey there, Red Hawks 360. This is George Costanza. And let me tell you something. You're watching another R360 joke of the day. And I'm also an architect. Can I tell you a joke? But first, I must ask you a question. Do you see what? It, if you didn't like the joke, I probably should have shaved it for later. You've been waiting for it all week. We've got the submissions for week one of Coach Duick's Basketball Horse Challenge. Mr. K, roll the tape. Hey, this is Coach Duick, and this is Coach Duick's Horse Challenge. I would like you to see if you can successfully replicate the move that you see on this basketball court. Let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! What I'm going to do is, I'm going to dribble behind my back, between the legs, right-handed layup, or using your dominant hand. Remember, it has to go in. Y'all ready for this? Check it out. Let's check it out. Headline gotta go! Headline gotta go! He could go! 
Check it out. Thank you to all students and staff for their submissions. Bonus points going out to Kara and Colin Bartell for the fist pumps, Emmett Do It for that basketball gear, and our top submission of the week goes to senior varsity captain Rachel Walner for the full on coach Do It impression. We have learned that Mr. Walner was, in fact, disqualified for not using proper equipment. Better luck next week. We'll have your week two challenge coming your way on Monday as the quest continues for the game used basketball grand prize. As we continue to recognize different art projects from around Red Hawk Nation, every once in a while something is submitted to R360 that makes us stop and just say, wow, we cannot hype this one up enough folks. It is truly one of a kind. So much talent, so much creativity it just needs to be celebrated. You know, the great sculptor Michelangelo once said, Mrs. Reimer, get on with it. Okay, well, I hope you're not wearing any socks out there, because if you are, they're about to be knocked right off. It's not only students who are sending in art projects, but parents have been really surprising us as well. Thank you to Mrs. Manning for sending in this amazing craft earlier this week. We have a couple of Red Hawk birthdays this week, weekend, sorry, starting off with Tabea Hyde for tomorrow and then for Austin Le Moyne on Sunday. Happy birthday, Tabea and Austin. Well, those are your news stories for this week. Remember to keep sending in your local heroes, music pieces, name drops, sports clips, jokes, dances, and pet profiles. As we sign off today, it's the return of the Cabinet of Curiosities podcast. This is Mrs. Reimer signing off. Have a great day learning from home and have a great weekend, everyone. Our world is full of the unexplainable. And if history is an open book, all of these amazing tales are right there on display, just waiting for us to explore. Welcome to the Cabinet of Curiosities. In a superhero's origin story, there's always a moment when they realize their true calling. Peter Parker learns that his spider powers come with great responsibility after his uncle is murdered. The death of Bruce Wayne's parents inspires him to don a cape and cowl and fight crime in Gotham City. And Superman understands that he is supposed to use his gifts in order to stop the kinds of threats plaguing his beloved metropolis. And then there's Isaac. Isaac's calling came from something much less super, but still quite important. Isaac worked at New York City's Louis Charlock & Company Bank in 1900. He came and went as he pleased, and his colleagues didn't mind. As they handled withdrawals and deposits, Isaac would often find a comfortable spot somewhere to watch the people coming and going throughout the day. On November 14th, Isaac noticed something odd. Someone he didn't recognize entered the bank. They were disheveled, and the bank must have been busy because no one saw them slip by customers and clerks as they made their way around toward the safe. But Isaac noticed. He started moving toward them when Max Lubiner, another teller, noticed the interloper at his feet. Startled, he reached down to stop them, but was attacked. That's when Isaac leapt into action. He screamed at the would-be thief while others picked up sticks and other weapons with which to arm themselves. They approached slowly, trying to lure him away from the safe, but it didn't work. Isaac went after them, throwing punches and yelling. As the two fought, they rolled around on top of the banker's desks, kicking up money and scattering coins all over the floor. Customers hid in the corners of the building while the fight ensued. Lubiner insisted the doors be locked to trap the two fighters inside until the authorities arrived. However, his instructions startled both the bankers and the customers alike, sending everyone into a panic over what they thought was a robbery in progress. They didn't understand. It was only just a fight. 
Isaac, a burly fellow not easily pinned down, chased the suspect all over the bank as spectators outside caught sight of the commotion. With their hands cupped around their eyes to see through the bank's windows, they watched as the two tussled. After several minutes, the thief, cash in hand, managed to break free from Isaac's grasp and dashed for an open window at the back of the bank. He jumped up and out, but his getaway was short-lived. A tall fence blocked off the area behind the bank on all sides, preventing them from escaping with the money. Instead, they hopped into an empty barrel and hoped that no one would find them. Meanwhile, the police were notified of the attempted robbery and the officer on duty, Ajax Whitman, hurried over to the bank. He demanded the doors be unlocked so that he could apprehend the suspect, who had eluded the clerks out back and ran once again into the bank. As soon as the doors were opened, the thief ran out into the street, Lubiner and the other employees yelling after him. But nobody pursued them. Sure, the bank had gotten its money back, but there was no point in arresting the suspect. They hadn't tried to break in, nor had they really stolen any money. They hadn't passed a teller a note saying to fill a bag with cash in the drawer, either. The would-be thief had simply settled in beside the safe and got to work on a very relaxing nap. The thief wasn't really a thief. It was a cat. One that had gotten accustomed to living on the street and going where it pleased. When it had tried to escape, a few bills had gotten stuck to its paws, but they were quickly recovered. And Isaac? He wasn't officially a bank employee either. He was known as Isaac the Well-Fed Bank Cat, who spent his time rubbing against the teller's legs and sleeping around the building. It seems that the street cat had intruded on Isaac's home turf, turning Isaac into a local hero. He hadn't stopped a supervillain or prevented the end of the world, but he'd made sure no one else was taking a cat nap in the bank on his watch. After all, that was his job. <laughs> 